Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode and I am crazy excited because today we're going to discuss the single biggest investment that I've done to date on the boat and that is the Garmin Ultra Echo Map 122. Uh, this is super exciting. This is something that I have been waiting forever to show you guys. This has been sitting in my closet since like Black Friday uh, 2021. So very excited to trot this out because it is time to install it on the boat. And today we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to take this out. I'm going to show it to you. We're going to compare it to a 93 SV. Okay. So you get to see what it looks like compared to a nine inch unit. And uh, we'll talk about the differences and uh, show you what's in the box and all that good stuff. All right. So uh, without further ado, I say we crack this open. But of course, before we do that, guys, don't forget if you enjoy the channel, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video to help me grow the channel. And of course, hit the bell notification. That way, you know, every time we do a new video uh, and a ton of it is about Garmin, actually. I seem to be a little obsessed with Garmin Echo Map. So if you have a Garmin Echo Map, you want to learn all about your Garmin, this is the channel. All right, now we'll crack it open. So first up, it comes in this lovely box from Garmin. Ooh. So this is the Echomap Ultra 122 SV Plus transducer. So this also includes the GT56 UHD transducer. Um, now you guys might have noticed that there is a 122 and there's also a 126. In case you're wondering what the difference is, it's very simple. It's the maps that come preloaded, okay? The 122 is cheaper because it comes with the world base maps. They're not very detailed, they're just very basic maps. Uh, the 126 comes with the US lakes, uh, the G3 maps. So they're a lot more detailed more expensive that's why the unit's more expensive other than that this is exactly the same and I'm in Canada so I don't need the US maps and I can just use the Canadian map card that is with my other 93 SV and 95 SV so we're all set with that comes in a nice big box so let's open her up and we'll talk about the differences we'll look at it from all angles and all that good stuff let's go remember guys your serial numbers are always inside the box when you open it don't lose your serial number sticker and then we start off with the Beautiful cover. Look at the size of this cover. Hang on a second. I got. I want to compare this. Hold on. Check this out. This is the 93 SV cover. Actually, this is a 95 SV plus unit, and this is the Ultra. Look at the size difference. <laughs> I can't wait to have this on the boat. All right, let's keep going. All right, then we have the unit itself. Look at that. So we've got some foam protectors. There we go. Check that out. And of course, the ever satisfying, oh, I'm not gonna peel it yet. Uh-uh, we're gonna wait till we install it, all right? Okay, then we've got our instructions. There you go. After that, we have the mounting template. So if you wanna dash mount this or otherwise surface mount it somewhere and you're not gonna be using any kind of uh, arm or stand or whatever, uh, that's the template that you need to use right there. And then inside the box is another box of goodies. So all of our other pieces will be in here. Let's just grab it by the tabs and lift it out, hopefully without smashing anything. There we go. All right, that's it for the box. There we go. Okay, all kinds of stuff in here. So we'll go through it. All right, so you get one power cable. Power cable. Get a whole bag full of stuff in here. Let's see what's happening in here. Okay, this is everything. We'll do this one next. That's the bag for the transducer. Um, mounting screws right there. So you've got your stainless steel screws. These are all the magnets. These are the RF magnet filters. So these are clipped over the cables uh, that connect to the unit. So you've got, let's see, one, two, three. You've got four of them, as well as some tie wraps for your cable organizers. Um, and it has a little, little instruction pamphlet right here like that, uh, that explains to you which cables get which magnets and where they go. So there's our magnets. And then we've got our carefully wrapped bracket. Okay, so big difference right here. Big difference, this is metal. For anybody that's got a seven inch, six inch, or nine inch series uh, Echo Map, uh, you'll know that this is made out of plastic. This one here is actually aluminum. Uh, so it's solid metal which is cool. Yeah, the whole thing is metal. Also interesting to note that the bracket, the, the clamp that holds it through, that holds the unit in place, is actually a completely different mechanism. So it's not like the plastic clip that just pops in place. 
And you've got several other ports on here that you do not get in the smaller series. So we'll talk about that and the advantages of that. But yeah, I love that this is metal. Great. So this is super strong. I guess it has to be. The unit is so huge. Next up, you've got the gaskets. So these are the gaskets for your flush mount setup. Little foam gaskets uh, that stick on. So we got those. And then we have the transducer bag. And one of the questions I actually have is, and I'm hoping that the transducer actually connects uh, to the same bracket of the old transducer. I've got an old GT34 or something like that. I'm hoping that I don't need to screw around with that and this is just a straight out swap, which would be amazing. Stay tuned and we'll find out. All right, so this is everything that you would need to mount the GT56 UHD to a trolling motor. So you've got the uh, bracket that the transducer actually bolts onto, and then you've got two clamps that go through this mount and that's what connects to the barrel mount of the trolling motor. This is a clip that's used for connecting to the transom mount. Take that out for you here. This is the bracket that goes up against the transom. And then this bracket here, let me pop this out. This bracket here is what goes again. Interesting, it's all plastic. So that goes like that. So that's what connects to the transom of your boat, like so. Now the question is, do I have to switch this out onto my boat? We'll see. If anything, hopefully the spacing for the holes is the same as my old one. I'm just not a fan of drilling holes into the transom. I may get myself a transom saver if that's the case, which is a plastic piece of, well, it's a plastic rectangle that's about, probably about three quarters of an inch thick and you glue it to the back of your transom and then you can drill holes into that and mount your transducers to that. Uh, that might be the way to go. Uh, we've got some little cable management pieces here, so this would be, you know, used to fasten the cable up the transom of the boat. So you've got that. I actually already have them installed on my boat, so I'm just gonna reuse those. This is actually the threading uh, that's used on the transducer cable. So once you fish all your trans, this is basically they ship this separately, so your transducer cable is not super wide. It's as thin as possible. Once you finish your run, you clip this onto the transducer cable, and that's what you use to screw it onto the back of your unit. And then we've got the transducer itself and the instructions. That's the transducer transom template right there. Your instruction booklet and then the transducer itself. And there it is. This is the latest and greatest at the time of filming um, UHD transducer. So there you go, that's what that looks like. We've got these SV units, you've got the plus unit, you've got the UHD units, you've got the UHD transducers. It's important to note that the UHD, which stands for ultra high definition, they're not referring to this screen. So when you think of like a UHD or an HD screen, you're thinking of your TV is 1080p or 4K or 8K, whatever. Um, the UHD that's with these, it means ultra high definition transducers. It doesn't mean that the screen on your unit is HD. So when we look at a plus unit, an Echomap Plus versus an Echomap UHD, the screen resolution is not any better. It's not any crisper or nicer or whatever on the UHD versus the plus. The difference is, is that the UHD units support UHD transducers, which have much, much finer detail, okay? So just to be clear, that's what that means. And of course, the Ultra is compatible with all of these UHD transducers or old ones, um, and you will get the best resolution possible on the Ultras. They have a higher screen resolution than the uh, 95 or 93 SV UHDs, okay? So the Ultra has the higher resolution, the biggest screens, 10 and 12 inches, um, and they are, of course, compatible with all of these UHD transducers. Okay guys, here we've got everything laid out on the table. Okay, so starting with the transom. So this is everything you need for the transom. So that connects to the back of the boat. And these are the bolts that hold it in place. And these are the bolts that's used to thread through here that connects this section of the transom out to here. And then your transducer connects directly onto the bottom of that, like so. Then your other option is the barrel mount on your trolling motor. So these actually thread through holes on the side. So that kind of just goes like so. And then one here and that connects to the barrel. And then once again, this simply clips on 
to this, you bolt it in place. This is for your wire management, so this is when you run the cable up the back of the transom, that's what this is for. You've got your instructions, you've got your template, and you've got the clip that secures the threads around the end of the transducer cable right there once you've got it run uh, to your console or wherever you need this transducer to be. And then in terms of the Echomap accessories, we've got the extremely awesome full metal base right here. We've got the unit itself, we've got the gaskets for the flush mount, and then over here, you've got all of your instructions and your template. And then over here, we've got the cover, power cable, all of your magnets for the RFI filtering and the cable ties. All right, guys, some amazing news. Huge thank you to the engineering team and the people at Garmin for doing this one. Round of applause for you guys. The bolt pattern on the new transducer is exactly the same as the old one, thank goodness. So that means I can unbolt the old transducer and directly bolt on the new one without having to change any of my transom mount. Oh, which is awesome. Amazing, yep, it's the same bolt pattern. Fantastic, good call Garmin, way to go. All right, so another question you might have is what am I gonna use to mount this thing? So this is actually a uh, 95 or 93 SV plus uh, bracket, okay? And the uh, 93SV UHD will have probably the exact same bracket or, or close to it. Um, and I've got it on a RAM base here. So you just basically loosen this up and that moves around and there's a ball mount that's located on the boat that this just connects to, okay? So that's what this looks like. Obviously way too weak for a 12 inch unit. So I've got this beast. So there you go, there's a slight size difference. Uh, so this is a one inch ball, this is a two inch ball. So this big dude here, this is a 11 inch uh, by three inch. It is the Ram D 111U-C. Okay, that's the model. There'll be a link in the description below. Everything we're gonna talk about in today's video, uh, just look in the description. I'll have links to everything. Uh, and this cost me about $139 Canadian. Uh, so, you know, they're expensive, but I mean, this thing is a tank. So I actually got two of them. There'll be one up front uh, and one at the console. So that's what I'm mounting this on. So I just got to get some bolts. Um, these don't come with mounting bolts. So I do have to get some bolts for this. Uh, that's it. So look, why don't we open up the uh, 122? We'll plug it into power. We'll give it a look over uh, and then we'll kind of mount them side by side temporarily and, and see what that looks like. All right. So here's the base guys, uh, and you can see the base actually has two ports that the unit connects to, uh, rather than the one that we traditionally see with the smaller Echomap series. And one of the big advantages that I love about this is it comes with two networking ports, okay? So these two dark ports right here, those are networking ports. And what's awesome about having two, and only the Ultras have two, is that you can connect this to another unit, all right? So it only takes up one port, and then your black box for your live scope can connect into the second one, you don't need to use a switch. Whereas uh, if you were to have more than one unit uh, and you wanted to connect two units, like two UHD units, like two nine inch ones, as well as live scope, you only have one port. So you'd only be able to connect one unit uh, to the other directly, or you can connect your live scope to one unit, but you can't network it. What you need to do is you need to get a switch and then you wire everything to the switch and then you wire the switch to your units and that's how you can have everything on the same network. But you don't need the switch or the extra cables if you simply have the ultra. So big advantage right there. Then of course we have our power right here. Uh, this is for your transducer. This is for the LVS transducers. You've got your Namiya 2000 port. And, uh, and that's pretty much it, so there you go. And then, like I said, this connects actually with a totally different mechanism, um, which is interesting. It's got kind of like this metal flap here. So let's connect that. Should we peel this off now? No, let's wait. We won't peel it off yet. <laughs> okay, so you can see right here, there's a lip on the base, and that actually just goes under here, fits under there. And then there's another slot that's right here that this piece over here slides into. So all we need to do is put this on the lip and then make sure that this goes underneath and then you just click it in place. That's it, you're done. It's on there. And then in order to disengage it from the base, you just push, lift up and it pops off. That easy, just like that. All right guys, I've got them temporarily plugged in here. Let's uh, do the very satisfying job of peeling that off.
Oh yeah. All right, so right away you can see the obvious size difference. Uh, you know, it's obviously much larger, even though this is a nine out of 12, right? Because it's diagonal, it's just, it's huge. Um, but bear in mind, right, the screen doesn't take up you know, all this. The screen is actually inwards by about an inch on every border. So why don't we turn them on and see what it looks like. This one actually seems to have better white balancing. This one's got kind of a yellow tinge to it. The white on this one is actually whiter. It's just brighter. Um, I don't know if that's just because of age. This is a plus unit, it's older, but definitely this has some yellowiness to it compared to this guy. Now, before we zoom in and get a closer look, uh, one of the differences that I see right off the bat is this actually has two uh, micro SD card slots, whereas the smaller units only have one. So if I have two separate map cards, I can put both of them in here and run both sets of maps uh, as opposed to on here that I can only put one. So let's zoom in because uh, I'm gonna tone down the brightness of the camera, that way you can see the screens better. Um, and we're gonna just like get a, get a sense of what it looks like in terms of detail as best I can. We'll put it in the simulator mode uh, and just see what the screen differences look like okay now one of the first things I notice is look how bright the buttons are here they're much brighter than on this side here they're much I don't know they're just way way brighter over here but it seems like this screen is a bit brighter uh, if you look at the two like this I don't know there's a there's definitely a color difference this seems like I don't know it's like the saturation is higher on this the blue is much bluer if that makes sense and here it's kind of more grayed out but this definitely seems to be a little bit of a brighter screen now, one of the big differences I'm gonna show you is that these units have much higher processing power, okay? So if I go into a chart, and we go into the fishing chart, and I'll do the same thing here. Let's get ourselves situated on the, in Montreal here. Because this thing currently thinks I'm in located in Australia. Here's a difference that I want you guys to see, and it's the processing power. Now watch what happens when I pinch and zoom in on this. See how long it takes for it to, you know, just isolate in. And then when I zoom out, see how long it takes for it to kind of refresh. Now watch when I do it on this one. See how it's faster and smoother? Now, unfortunately, it's not the same map. It's not loading the same level of details, but you can see when I'm zooming out, it never actually kind of blanks out it's because it, the processor is loading the maps just way faster. Whereas if I do this, see how it's flickering and kind of disappearing and then there's a bit of a pause? See how it's, see how it's doing that? Whereas this won't do that. So it's just much smoother. Um, and it doesn't matter the size of the map, like it doesn't matter on the map size uh, or the map detail, it'll still be much faster. And here's the difference how it looks with live scope. Um, I mean, you can, I mean, basically this is twice the size. I mean, here, look at it compared to my hand. You know, this, this, this thing is basically, looks like it's double the size to me. I can definitely see stuff a lot better. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, it's, I mean, I get this seems large by itself, but when you put it next to the 12, it's, it's just an amazingly huge difference. It's kind of crazy actually. And here's the difference on a combination menu. So, I mean, it's obviously just much easier to read this in a combination than it is on this side where it's a little bit harder to see. So that's a huge difference. And here you can see side view, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just such a bigger screen. You can see so much more detail. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a game changer for sure. Uh, especially for us older guys, you know, we, we have trouble seeing stuff, but I mean, that's just super impressive. Definitely the, the, the size advantage is significant. Uh, I mean, it's clear as day, this thing is huge. So in terms of visibility and screen clarity and just being able to see the additional details with the larger screen, I mean, the Ultra is clearly the winner. It's, it, is, it is a big difference, you know? In case you were wondering, is it that much of a difference between a, the 12 and a nine? Well, here you go. I mean, it's, it's pretty huge. Pretty big difference. So we've already talked about some of the initial differences in the units. You know, you've got the two slots here, whereas this has one micro SD slot. Uh, we talked about the metal bracket instead of the plastic. Uh, some of the other differences include uh, the UHD units and the plus units have the five Hertz GPS. Uh, this actually has the 10 Hertz, so you get a faster connection to your GPS. 
We also mentioned that you get two network ports on this guy as opposed to just one on the Plus and the UHD, but they're all networkable. So the Plus, the UHD, and the Ultras can all be networked together. You cannot network together the old Chirps and the first generation of Echo Maps. Those cannot be networked uh, with these units uh, because they, they use the old Nimia uh, blue and brown wires that are on the power cord to communicate, whereas these are straight up RJ45 network connectors. The Ultra also has the dedicated LVS port on the back so you can connect the LVS-12 transducer. So that is the transducer that does not need the black box. Uh, so you can just hook that up directly. So it's kind of the most inexpensive live scope setup that you can have. Another difference is the sounder output on these. Uh, all of these units, the smaller, the nine inch and the smaller ones are 500 watts. Uh, the Ultra is 600 watts. Now, one thing that is constant throughout all of them is they all have the same specs in terms of tracks that you can save and the waypoints. You can save like 5,000 waypoints on the units. All that is pretty much the same. There aren't any big differences in terms of that kind of functionality. The only other difference that I can think of off the top of my head are the screen resolutions that we touched on before. So the UHD and the Plus units are 800 by 480 and the resolution on these are 1280 by 800. So I mean, it's almost double the resolution. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. But I mean, for me, it's just the size gain is just, is just unbelievable. I wanted something that I could really zoom in and clearly see what I'm looking at on the screen. And I was worried with the nine inch unit, you know, down on the floor of the boat, it would be pretty tough to see. Um, and from what I'm seeing here initially, no regrets whatsoever. I can't wait to get this thing installed. So there you go, guys. That is the unboxing of the Ecomap Ultra 122 SV. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And of course, guys, if you did, make sure you smack the like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. And if you have any questions, questions or any comments about this unit or about Garmin or whatever, just go in the comments below, ask your questions, and I'll try and answer as quickly as I can, all right? So guys, thank you again. Thank you so much. Stay tuned because we're going to be installing this and so much more on the boat this season, and I promise you, you're going to love it, all right, guys? Take it easy. Have an excellent, excellent week, and we'll see you guys on the next episode, all right? Peace.